Hello, and welcome back to another lesson. Kindergartners, it's so great to see you and to have so many of you joining me for all of our lessons. If this is your first time watching a lesson with me, welcome, so excited you're here. My name is Mrs. Wheeler and I teach kindergarten right here in Seattle at Hazel Wolf K-8. We have spent the last few weeks reading nonfiction books, books that teach us information and that we can learn from. And when we've been reading those books, we've been doing lots of thinking, lots of wondering, lots of talking about our books, and lots of writing about our books. We have been using those text features to help us understand the information, and we've also been stopping and wondering what we're learning so we can make sure that we're doing our best thinking. All right, let's get started. You might see me hold up a couple signs today, and I want to make sure we know what I want you to do when you see those, okay? You might see me hold up this sign. It says, I am wondering, and I want you to stop and wonder. What are you wondering? You might see this one that says, think time, and I might hold it up and ask you to stop and then think and then share your thinking. And you might see, let me hold up, a turn and talk sign, just like we do in the classroom where when it's time, you're going to turn and talk with a partner. Now, do you have your partner from your kindergarten classroom right now with you? Probably not, huh? Since we're all in our homes right now, gosh, we wish we could be in our classrooms, don't we? You have a few choices of who to talk to when it's turn and talk time, okay? You might turn and talk to yourself. You might just whisper in your hand, pretend you're talking to yourself. You might pretend to call Mrs. Wheeler on the phone and tell me what you're wondering. You might turn and talk if you have a family member sitting with you right now, you can talk with them. If you have a pet in your house, you can turn and talk with them, or you could get a stuffy and turn and talk with your stuffy when it's time for turn and talk time. You have so many options. The most important thing, kindergartners, is that you are talking and sharing your thinking out loud, and it's really important that you share talking and thinking in any language that you feel the most comfortable in. We want you doing your very best learning at home, okay? All right, in our last lesson together, we read this book called The Sun, and it taught us all about the sun and the solar system. We read the book and we stopped and we wondered, what were we wondering about the sun? And then we made this chart. We wrote about things we wonder about the sun. And we wanted to see if any of these wonderings were answered in our book. We wondered, what is the sun? How big is the sun? Does the sun move? Is the sun hot? And how far away is the sun? So I'm gonna give you a couple seconds of think time here, and I'm gonna add to our chart maybe one or two more wonders. What else are you wondering about the sun? What are you wondering right now? Go ahead. This was something a lot of us were talking about in our last lesson too. Lots of kindergartners were wondering. We, we learned that the sun is really hot in our book, but we wanted to know how hot is the sun. I'm gonna add that to our chart right here. How hot is the sun? That's a great wondering. All right, we're gonna leave our wondering chart right up here. And we are going to jump back into this book, The Sun, and we're gonna look at a few of the diagrams, those pictures or photographs that help us learn and understand more information. All right, readers, let's get started. Readers, in this part of the book, it teaches us about the solar system. So if we look on page 12 on this diagram, this page right here, I can see that sometimes nonfiction books include diagrams or pictures that help the reader understand the information. This page also has a label on it. I'm gonna read it to you. The sun, the sun. When I look at this diagram, it can help me understand what I'm reading. I'm gonna show you how I do this. I'm going to reread this page and then I'm gonna show you how I stop and wonder what am I learning and how did that diagram help me understand the information? Okay, watch me. The solar system. The sun and the planets around it are called the solar system, the sun. 
wow, well, when I'm looking at that diagram, I see that the sun and all the planets, and I also can see it helps me understand that the sun is actually in the middle of the solar system. I also can see that the sun is much bigger than all of the planets around it. I can do all of that just by looking at that diagram. Readers, what else can you learn from this diagram? Take some think time, go ahead. I heard a few kindergartners share that when you look at that diagram, you can learn that two, two things, that the planets are all different sizes. You can tell that by looking at that diagram. And also you could tell and learn that the sun is right in the middle of the solar system. All right, let's keep reading. We're gonna look at another diagram and see how it helps us understand the information. All right, readers, I want you to look carefully at this page right here. And I want you to look really carefully at the diagram or the picture on the page. And I want you to think, how does the diagram help you understand the book, okay? The sun gives the planets heat. How does the diagram or picture help you understand what I just read? Turn and talk with your partner. Students, I heard so many of you sharing that when you look at that diagram, that picture right here on this page, page 14, you can tell that the sun and all the planets, you can see them all together. And you can actually see that the sun only reaches one side of the planets at a time, that the heat is only going to one side of the planet at each time. Okay, let's look at another diagram. Okay, readers, another diagram for you. Look carefully at this page as I'm reading, and I want you to think, how is the diagram helping you understand the book? Ready? Earth orbits the sun. The sun, Earth. How does the diagram or picture help you understand what I just read? Turn and talk. Yeah, readers, I heard so, so many of you sharing that by looking at this diagram, you can see that the earth moves around the sun. And you can actually see that the sun is much bigger than the earth. We were able to learn that information just by looking at this diagram. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, we have one more diagram to look at the one right here, All right? When I read it, I want you to look at the diagram carefully and think, how does it help you understand the book? Ready? Light from the sun makes the moon shine. The moon, the sun. How does this diagram or picture help you understand what I just read? Turn and talk. Wow, kindergartners, I can tell you are really using these diagrams to help you understand the information in the book. I heard you share that you can see that the light from the sun is what actually makes the moon shine. And I heard some of you share that you can see that the moon is dark without the sun. Nice work, let's keep going. Readers, another really helpful tool or text feature that often nonfiction books use is the glossary. And remember the glossary helps us understand the book because it lists words from the book that we might not know and it teaches us the definition or what they mean. Let's look at this glossary together. This was in the back of our book, The Sun. It says picture, picture glossary. All right, I'm gonna read the words to you and teach you the definition. Gas, not solid like wood or liquid like water. Air is a gas that we breathe in but cannot see. Layer, 
When something has layers, it is made up of different parts that lie on top of each other. Orbit, move around. Solar system, the name for the sun and the eight planets that move around it. This is the picture glossary in the back of the sun. Now let's look at the glossary from our book that we read last week, the moon, and we're gonna compare these two. Okay, get ready. Here's the glossary from the book that we read last week, the moon. I'm gonna read just a few of the words in this glossary, and then we're gonna look at both glossar glossaries and kind of compare them, okay? Here we go. Glossary, we have crater, a hole made when objects crash into a planet's or moon's surface. Earth, the planet we live on. Glow, to give off a low, even light. Reflect, to return light from an object. The moon reflects light from the sun. So this is the glossary from the back of the book, the moon, the one that we read last week. Now let's look at both glossaries and compare a little bit how they're the same and how they're different. All right, readers, here we have both glossaries. We have the glossary here, glossary from the back of the moon. And then we have this glossary, picture glossary from the back of the sun. What do you notice about these two glossaries? And which glossary do you like better and why? Turn and talk with your partner. Kindergartners, I heard so many of you sharing that the first thing you noticed about these glossaries was that the glossary over here, the one about the moon, is just has words. And then you notice that the picture glossary, the sun, the book from the sun glossary, it has pictures in it. And I heard you share that you like the picture glossary, the one from the sun better, because it has pictures that goes along with each of those words. A glossary, can help us learn these words. And the reason this one says picture glossary is because it has a picture that goes along with each word. Like here's the word orbit and there's a picture of orbit right there next to it. Here's a picture of gas and there's the word right there. Wow, this is a really helpful tool that some nonfiction books include. All right, readers, great thinking during making meaning. Get ready for vocabulary. We have two new words to learn. Kindergartners, are you ready for vocabulary? Give me a thumbs up if you are. Oh yeah, I even see some double thumbs up. All right, let's get started. Last lesson, we learned two new words together. The first word that we learned was fact. Remember, a fact is something true. A fact, this says boats travel on water. That was something true. So let's put that up here for us. And the other word that we learned was the word sphere. Here's your sphere card. And remember, a sphere is something round, like a ball or a globe or an orange. And we played a game, is it a sphere or not a sphere? All right, I have two new words to teach you. Let's look back at our book, The Sun, okay? And jump in to see the words. All right, I'm gonna reread a page. Listen carefully, see if you can figure out what the new word is we're learning. The sun is very hot and bright, bright, yeah, bright is our new word that we're learning. The sun is very hot and bright. Bright means full of light or shining strongly. It is so hard to look at the sun, it kind of hurts our eyes because it's so bright or full of light and shining strongly. Here's our word card, bright. If you look at this picture, you can see the little girl is walking into a room she was in a dark room and now she's walking into a room with a lamp and it is so bright. She's kind of having to shade her eyes. It's hurting her eyes. It's so bright. It's full of light and shining strongly. Say the word with me, bright. One more time, bright. When something is bright, it means full of light or shining strongly. All right, let's play a little game, okay? I'm gonna give you a couple things and I want you to think, first let's think outdoors. Sometimes when I'm outside or outdoors, there are things that are bright, like the stars are very bright at night. 
or the lights on the cars are bright. Now I want you to think, what is something bright that you might see outdoors? And what does that look like? All right, take some think time. And you might use this prompt to help you in your thinking. Outdoors, hmm, what is bright? And it looks like what? So you can turn and talk to someone or you can just tell Mrs. Wheeler, what is something outdoors that is bright? And what does it look like? Go ahead, give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Kindergartners, I heard a few of you sharing. I heard you share that outdoors street lamps are bright and it looks like the light is shining on the sidewalk. I also heard some of you sharing that outdoors, sometimes the moon can be bright and we can see it shining at night. Okay, now let's think indoors. We're inside right now. What is something indoors that is bright? I know sometimes things that are bright indoors might be a computer screen or sometimes the lights in our classroom or our homes are really bright. Okay, take some think time. What is something that is bright that's indoors? And you might use this prompt. Indoors blank is bright. It looks, and tell me what it looks like, okay? What's something indoors that's bright? Thumbs up when you're ready to talk. I see lots of thumbs up, kindergartners. I heard you sharing with your partner that indoors, sometimes the lamp in your living room might be really bright. Sometimes we have candles in our house and sometimes the candle could be really bright inside. Wow, when things are outdoors, they can be bright. And when things are indoors, they can also be bright. Wow, pretty interesting, huh? All right, let's learn another word from our book, The Sun, okay? I'm gonna reread a few pages here to you. Okay, ready? Living things on earth need the sun. The sun gives living things light. The sun gives living things heat. I'm gonna read one more page, listen carefully. Living things on earth need the sun. Our word we're learning is need. When you need something, you must have it because it's important. Living things on earth need the sun. You must have it. So if I look here, here's our word, need. Say it with me, need. One more time, need. To play baseball, you need a few things to help you play the game. You need a ball and a mitt or a glove and you need a baseball bat. This boy is getting ready to play baseball and he needs these tools to help him play baseball. They're important, they help him play. In the book right here, it talks about the living, living things need the sun, like flowers need the sun. They need the light to grow. Animals need the sun. It's important, they must have it for the heat. And you know what, also sometimes we need this, we need the heat so that the ground doesn't freeze. These cows need the sun to keep them warm. And these plants need the sun to grow. All right, let's think now. Let's picture that we're in our classroom together. Ready, close your eyes. Visualize, picture in your mind. Okay, oh, we're in the classroom together. I see us all together. What are some things you might need to help you do your best learning at school and having fun. Like I know that my students need interesting books to read because they're full of facts and information. I also know that kindergartners, you need pencils and pens to practice writing stories and you need time to play because playing is fun. So think to yourself and get ready to turn and talk. What is something you need in order to learn and have fun at school. You might use this prompt to help you. To learn and have fun in school, I think students need, hmm, because what, what do you think they need? Go ahead, turn and talk. I heard 
so many of you using this prompt. I heard kindergartners sharing that to learn and have fun in school, I think students need pencils and crayons and markers to color and draw pictures. And I also heard some of you share that we need desks and chairs and pillows. We need places to sit so we can do our best learning. Those are things we need. We must have them because they're important to help our learning. Okay, now let's imagine, it's coming up to the end of the school year, let's imagine we were having a party, okay? What might we need to have our party? What are some things that we must have because they're important? What do you think? We're gonna have a party to celebrate the end of the year. You might use this to help you in your thinking. I think we need blank for our party because, and I want you to tell me why, okay? Use this to help you. Turn and talk, what do we need for our party and why? Kindergartners, you are having a lot of the same thinking today. You shared, I heard you share, I think we need games for our party because games are fun and a great way to celebrate. I also heard a few kindergartners share, I think we need music for our party because we can have music to dance to and to listen to. Music makes a party fun, huh? All right, let's really quickly review the words that we just learned. We learned the word bright. Say it with me. Bright, when something is bright, it's full of light and shining strongly. Whisper it with me, bright. All right, and the other word that we learned is the word need. Say it with me, need. When you need something, you must have it because it's important. Whisper it, need, yeah, all right. Those were the two new words that we learned during vocabulary. Let's now get ready for IDR, okay, here we go. Kindergartners, it's time for IDR. During IDR, the last few weeks, we've been reading nonfiction books or texts that can teach us, teach us information. Today, we're going to practice using the text features in many nonfiction books. And we're also going to practice wondering what are we learning about in that book and wondering what did we just learn about in the part of the book that we just read. So I've been reading a few nonfiction books. I read one about kites before, and today I'm reading one all about shadows and shade. And so I'm gonna model for you, I'm gonna show you how readers stop and think. And I kinda am asking myself this question. In this part of the book, I wondered, hmm, I'm gonna show you what I wondered, okay, ready? In this book, so I was reading, first it was teaching me what shadows are and shade. So it was saying, what's a shadow? A shadow is a dark shape and there must be light to make a shadow. When something blocks the light, it makes a shadow. So I'm learning, oh yeah, that's how shadows are made. And then, kindergartners, when I was reading this part, I stopped and wondered. Plants, some plants use shadows too. Some plants can only grow in the shade. And I stopped and I wondered, what, how can a plant grow without any sun? That means it can only grow in the shade. So I stopped when I was reading that and I wondered, how can that happen? And I wanna find out more information. All right, it's now your turn, are you ready? You have three jobs to do. This is a lot of jobs, get ready. Job number one is to read a nonfiction book or a couple nonfiction books. And I'll show you here in just a second where to find nonfiction books. Number two is to talk about what you're reading and what you're learning. It is super important that we share our work and our thinking with someone because it helps us understand it and it helps our brains remember what we're learning. And then number three is to write and draw about your learning and your wondering, just like I did. So you might use your literacy packet that you can get from the lunch sites, you can get it from the computer, or you can just use a blank piece of paper or even a piece of notebook paper to do your writing. And you will turn to the Wednesday page and you can see that I wrote and drew about what I was wondering. So right here I wrote, I wonder how plants can grow in the shade. 
And then I also wondered, do more plants grow in the sun or the shade? And I drew my picture and I even added labels to my picture. So your job is to do the same thing, even either on your literacy packet page or just on a piece of paper. I want you to read a book and then I want you to write, what are you wondering? What did you learn from that book? And then draw a picture that matches. And then I want you to share this work with someone in your family. I want you to teach them about what you've been doing and what you've been wondering and learning. All right, if you need some nonfiction books, here's where you can go to find some. You can visit the SPS website, student portal, and then click on academic tools. You'll find PebbleGo, TumbleBooks, many other tools and resources with books. Or you could go to Scholastic Learn at Home and you'll find lots of nonfiction books there as well. All right, kindergartners, that's the end of our lesson for today. Thank you for joining me. Keep doing your best learning and growing at home. And we'll see you again soon. We are missing you all so much. Bye, kindergartners. Mm -hmm.